Welcome back everybody, Just Mike here. Anyway, of course, we have another clock to work on. Never worked on one of these before. It's a wood-plated clock. And I actually got a decent deal because of the other items that came along with it. Let's take a look. So this is my wood-plated clock. And examining it, getting the chains hooked back up and whatnot, I found that this is actually a clock, but it's a timer. This hand here would be set on the hour of the day, within 12 hours obviously, of when you want the clock to start ringing. And so if you're on your wood stove, you're cooking bread or whatever, you'd turn this hand to how long you actually want to cook and then check your bread. Otherwise, it's my, like I say, my very first wood plated clock. We're going to get into this one. But along with this clock, I got this large deer or hunting head or however they want to put it. Uh, topper for a cuckoo clock and if anyone's ever looked the oak leaf that is the hardest one to find for a reasonable price crazy people on eBay for something the size of this they're going for they're asking a hundred hundred twenty five dollars for it and of course usually they got their ears this one happens to not have the ears so I have to carve them. This one here is running about, let's, let's just call it 14 inches. And so the bigger you get across, the higher price they want for them. And in my opinion, if your clock didn't come with the topper, don't worry about it. It looks just fine without it, unless you can find a reasonable deal, which Actually, I did with this whole box of stuff here. What also came with this clock was this clock. Oh, uh, is this a Lux or a Keebler? I can't tell. I forgot. I don't see it on the front. But either way, the Lux or the Keebler clocks aren't going very cheap. This one here doesn't have the hands for it. The pendulum's bent out of whack. I hadn't even tried straighten it. I do have the pine cone sitting in the box there. This is a very clean back. I don't have the, any idea why this is on here. Uh, it's not part of the clock. And then, like I said, I just got it, so I have no idea. But other than that, the clock doesn't really doesn't have any rust on it and so realistically as far as I'm concerned it's in pretty good shape move this back and forth the bird does go along with the pendulum so that let's say cuts down on the price where I paid for this which was a screaming deal as far as I'm concerned so far with those two items now, I got extra stuff in the box. I have no idea what it goes to. Some other clocks, I'm sure. This looks like a picture frame, but it actually goes inside a clock and locks into place. And I would guess this is supposed to have a piece of glass in here. So what clock this goes to, I have no idea. It could have gone to this clock. I almost doubt it, but it could have because there's no plates that came with this. It does have the locks to lock the sides on, including down here there's locks to lock the sides on. Yes, there's a chip there, and there's a possibility that chip could be there because they're trying to... Well, those are wood pegs. So I don't know if they're trying to pull, thinking that was a nail maybe, but it's a wood peg. I'm not even sure if I'm going to be able to take this clock apart yet. Like I say, we're going to get it, gonna get into it. I see two rings here, so there must have been a wire that slipped down that locked 
the plate that was on the side on here. There's two nails sticking out here and two, well there was one here, that nailed into the front where the numbers were, the dial. Anyway, the clock also came with this broken eagle and I would say, uh, I forgot the name of it, it's made out of the same stuff as this, the ground up wood and glue or sawdust and anyway that there's another piece that came with it this vintage box obviously it does not go with the clock but I'm sure they found it in the attic here's another piece looks like that parts knocked off a finial four o'clock which could be part of these clocks, I don't know. There's one finial here. There's a matching one here. And this one matches also. And then this, I recognize. This here is for the older movements uh, possibly in kitchen clocks or mantel clocks where the frame of the movement did not screw to the box it slipped into here and then you screwed this down and that held the movement in place other than that the only thing left in here is those weights sitting in the corner there for that one clock so here on this clock, it has the nut, the decorative nut I call it. And then it has another nut that screws down the minute hand. And of course a square hole and on this there's no paint on them but normally I I like to paint them it, unless they happen to have that bluish blued color on them so we'll have to see about that and then your hour hands just wedged on there And then this is supposed to be crimped onto, onto the shaft. So these two, this will hold this one down. But it's just sitting on top right now. That's the best for playing with it that I've, I've figured out so far. And on this clock, this here is what the alarm operates and this is triggered I don't know if you can let me get a screwdriver so I can point or something right in here you might be able to see there it is the wedge that wedge is what let's say opens up and that's what causes this thing to start ringing when you turn it far enough away from that wedge and it stops ringing now to get this all apart I I'm not sure we're just gonna wing it together the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this bell off Not gonna all come off in one piece, it's unscrewing from the wood box. Which is fine because I can hopefully get this apart 
and get it to come off right. Now this bell, I'd almost doubt it's brass. I don't know if it's been painted. There's a good chance it could be brass, but it's so old and corroded with, I'm going to call it kitchen debris. But hopefully we can get that shined up. If this here is just plain old plain old, I might go ahead and paint this to make it look nicer. I mean, there's no special deal as far as I'm concerned when it comes to this clock because there's no numbers. There, It'll never be what it was as in, I don't know what the plates look like or anything. Here the hammer is showing. So it rings back and forth onto that bell. And on the back here, it looks like a wood peg right there and there. And then there's a nail here and here next to the wood pegs. Then we have two nails down here if I want to try to get the back off. One, two, three, four wood pegs up at the top. Like I said, this clock's going to be just a little difficult to take apart because realistically, I'd like to shine all this stuff up back to the brass color or whatever the metal is so it can show off the clock a little bit better. You can see the bushing holes for the gears inside. And there's three of them on this plate. And looking inside, there's three also. And that does not count the ones that are sticking clear through. I'm trying to figure out how I can get this apart without destroying any of the wire stuff on here. This here looks like I can possibly push this in to get that ring off. Let's try that out. Well, I can't get the ring off until we take this taper pin off because this washer is going to be holding that one down. And this wire is not meant Oh, that's good. This wire is just setting in that hole there. So I can just take it out and push it to the side. And then that just pulls right off. And there you can see possibly the taper a little bit better with the alarm operates by. So before I take that off to give you the idea of what's going on here, this here rod holds this from ringing back, ringing at all, and turning this, which this here is the one that has the big hand on it that you select the hour or whatever, you can watch this going up and down which makes this rod go up and down and releases to let the allow the bell to start ringing bam right now it's supposed to be ringing i'm not pulling the chain but you see this is free now to move back and forth and the power is right there and over here. The power is right here for the bell to work. And then, of course, you move this further and it'll shut it off as this here raises. Now it's back on the off position. Now, in this movement, I would think because that bell is so noisy, you'd wind the whole clock up like it's supposed to be. This thing's going to ring clear until the bell side runs out of chain and stops here. I was thinking for today's standards, I might only measure out 
six inches or 12 inches of bell. So when this does go off, it doesn't ring, ring, ring and lose the chain up to the top here. And that would be, in my opinion, the modern, modern way of doing it. Uh, possibly this thing would ring so long is because back in the day, besides cooking, maybe they're out washing or whatever. And with that thing ringing as long as it did, they had a better chance of hearing this clock ringing. So again, let's go ahead and flip this wire up and out of the way. This is very oily and I can understand why of because of this being opened and people just playing with it because it is something unique. This here has the friction spring underneath it and it's not quite wanting to come off yet. There we go. If I wanted to take this out, I'd have to straighten this wire because this is a, let's call it a peg. This has been hammered in with the hole drilled through it for this to come out. And realistically, I would like to take that out. But we're going to see just how far in I'm going to get this. This plate here also, there's a peg there and a peg there, wood pegs. So it must be a nail or screw into one plate and this has four plates through here counting. So the first stick is just a stick. Second stick has to do with the winding and the gear that comes around to the front here. This first plate does nothing but holds this bracket. And this is brass and it goes to the part where the pendulum will be hitting. And this chain came with this. It looks like eight day chain. Uh, older clocks, I think were bigger chains back then. But I'm just trying to figure out how I can get this out because like I say I do want to clean those gears so let me think about this a minute I went ahead and took the hooks and rings off so let's go ahead and unwind these now I, this does have the horseshoe part that holds the wire for the pendulum and you can see it's just dangling there and I did pull on this and it did tick so this is more than likely a working clock without doing anything to it but just the same I wanted to clean this up instead of it just being kind of clunky looking or whatever that maybe will even brighten it up and I could be wrong trying to take this thing apart but that's what I want to do so I'm going to go ahead and straighten this out and I should be able to get through the hole and wheedle through that ring there to get the hammer out let's first see if I can straighten this up Uh, 
Now this does have a little collar on here to only let it go down so far. So this needs to come out of the hole just a little bit farther so I can wiggle it back and forth. There we go. Now let's see if we can get to that wire. I might have to open that up a little bit. And then like as if it was a chain to get this thing off of here. Let me get my little screwdriver. But my next size screwdriver. Don't want to lose that. Uh, pull clear out, which is fine. All you have to do is just cinch that back together again to hold your hammer. And it's really coated. I do believe it's brass by the looks of where it has been hitting. This here is nailed on. Just messing with this, I pulled the four nails out. There's nothing down below here but the two pegs I've noticed were there. So what I did is I started taking my screwdriver and popping it. So those aren't glued in, they're just pegs that are actually meant to hold this. And the nails were an extra bonus to keep this frame together. And this nail didn't have a head on it. So there you can get to this that is popped off and realistically why it's off I don't know because it shouldn't be that loose I was going to rehook it up but I'm not going to so I'll probably like to take that off also now I noticed here there are two pins like a nail that was bent over even and that might be the way to take those two plates off. And when it comes to this, I think I'm going to go ahead. Let's see. I don't have to unscrew that, unscrew that yet. It'll hold the gear in. So let me see about getting those two loops here out. So they don't go clear through this does yep so with that one out I'm on the bet you this here just slides out now And now those two gears should come right out. This is the winder. The winder has good clicking action to it. Right there's the clicker. This other one, it looks like there's a pin Say this thing's so dirty. There's a pin in there. I got to figure out which way it comes out so I can get it out. And then that whole gear there will come out. I was able to shove it through. 
taper pin and there that is and this just fell out which is great it has that brass look to it but it's all steel so that's all there is to that side now let me get that pin out there this came out now that I got loose enough let's take a look at that old crud that's on there You have to open this up, get it out of the way. Now you don't want to mix these up. Of course, you'll find out soon enough that these uh, pivot holes aren't matching that's going to help you out there uh, paying attention to that so I don't have to take that plate out because this here just slides around it This here, I don't know if I can get this one out. Oh, yeah. Success. I don't know for sure what I can do with this box. I'm going to try to clean it all up. Obvious, I don't want too much moisture on here, but there's going to have to be something, I'm going to guess, to get this cleaned up. Well, while you guys were gone, I got the parts as clean as I can get. This is an old brass, and it just doesn't clean up as well as I was expecting with brass cleaner. I mean, we got some of the parts that has a nice shine to them. But just the same, the dirt's off of them, the old grease and whatnot. And also... I wasn't going to take this out. It's nailed in and then the nails are bent over on the other side. And so I just cleaned this up the best I could. I waxed the box. After I washed it, of course. So now you can almost see the wood. Yeah, I could have sanded it, but I'm not into sanding this older stuff. I'm happy enough the way it is. And also, I noticed after I got this thing cleaned up a bit, is it on this one? There's a 14. And I also saw 14 on here somewhere, I do believe. There it is. Now I tried looking it up for a wooden plate movement number 14 with an alarm which maybe that was my mistake but I could not find anything about this. I have no idea but I'm going to guess your wooden plate clocks 
or in the 1800s somewhere. Don't know that much about this one. I was trying, but like I say, I'm awful at figuring that kind of stuff out. So anyway, I guess I'm ready to put this back together. Oh, I don't know how many toothpicks I've gone through. As you can see how dirty that is. Running it through the pivots. Now these do have brass in there. In which I will admit I never knew that. I just figured they're a hole with the, in the holes a certain drill size. But it, it does have brass. And also I've noticed, for example, on this one. See how large that is right there? Look how small that end is. As far as I know, your nowadays clocks, whatever size is here, is also on here. On these, I oiled down the shaft because that's the only part that moves. On the clicker, I oiled the where the pin is. And I oiled under the pin, the top of the pin and under the pin. And then I went ahead, which might have been a mistake, I don't know, but I added grease onto the gear part so the clicker, for one, isn't wearing so hard. This one here doesn't look as bad. This one here, it looks like one side is wearing down pretty good. So that's why I decided to go ahead and grease those. So I guess I'm ready to put this clock back together again. Let me take a look at my phone. And of course we can do one half and then the other in which I'll do the time side first because you have to kind of slide the gears in this way as I remember. I have a little bit of grease on the part where it goes just inside to make it a little bit smoother. And I'm also going to oil it.
So I got all this back together. I haven't got the washer on there yet. And this rod that sets the alarm off and this rod that's bent down that I had to straighten to get it out I bent it down I had to adjust this rod a little bit more to catch it in order for this thing to not continuously ring after you've adjusted let's call this the timer hand that's what it is goes up high enough it's not gonna see right now it's locked in turning this and it's gonna go off right looks like it's gonna go there it goes see how that falls down on there So now I can get that, I need to oil that, and then I can get the washer on there and the taper pin. The hand you set yourself never turns. And if you watch underneath, right there is the pin that's going to eventually drop. So we're turning the time right now. There's the pin on this gear here. And of course this will now ring. I also put the swing in. I put a long leader on there because I don't know what size it's going to need. Uh, most of these clocks I've seen, they seem to have an awful long pendulum. I don't know if this one's going to or not. And I won't know until I get some chains on here and get it running again. Anyway, I need to put those two pins in before I forget to hold these plates into place. I already oiled all my pivots on the front and back. And so, now to get those pins in. So I got those two pins in. I'm pretty much done with this. So match up those two pegs up here. Get that in and then it'll tack it back in with the nails to keep this from coming apart. The bell is just a steel bell. It doesn't shine up or anything else. I use a brown scrubby on it. And most of it does help take some of the rust off. What I plan on doing is painting this. But I'm only going to paint the outside, not the inside. And that's so when it rings, it'll have a solider ring. Even though the little bit of paint I put on here is going to give it some deadness to it. But I'm not going to use this for cooking. And if I was, I'm not out hanging clothes on the line. <laughs> hanging clothes on the line or anything else. So I'm going to paint just the outside of this. This here I do believe is a brass color once I get it cleaned up. And so I'll leave it. The hands have some bluing on them but they have rust on them too and I'm thinking about just going ahead and painting these black and of course we don't have a dial for a clock and so until I decide to make something I'm gonna be good with just the way it is this here bell uh, hammer it moves around right now once the bell's on it won't be able to come clear out like this it'll be where it's supposed to be at all times the chains I've ran through the clock cleaner they're rusty 
and I plan on using again a newer one but this uh, reddish brown pad to clean the chains and then I'll probably go ahead and run some of the Howard wax over them just to help them from turning all rusty again and besides that this isn't going out in the garage as long as I own it so for the timer hand I've got it set right where that pin is and it did clean it excuse me it did clean it pretty good it's a brass color now this has to go on first and then this is a washer I guess it's supposed to be pressed on there it's got a lot of slop in there oh maybe you turn it yeah you turn it now the hands on there so that's put on right this time and so the hands are drying I went ahead and painted them black so I'm gonna go ahead and install the chains and the only thing you do is you see which way it turns this is turning this away so I have to put the chain in this end first and then I'll turn this around and have it pop out there but before I do that we got these rusty chains I gotta take care of so temporarily I just printed off a dial just out of normal paper I stuck it to the back cardboard or piece of the cardboard of a packaging box doesn't matter what kind of box but this here is just to show the example of how this clock works and so I'm going to have to cut the hole out and I'm not necessarily going to mount it I don't think because this is just temporary to give you the idea of what this clock actually does or how it works So the way this works, this is an alarm clock, I do believe you'd call it. This here is where you set it to the hour that you want the alarm to go off, which the alarm would be the bell. You always bring it counterclockwise. Let's try 3.30. Let me put a weight on this and then we'll turn the minute hand and get it to go off. 
So I have a weight on it. It's not the right size, but it's good enough. Well, we're on 12 o'clock right now. Let's bring this around 1230. We're close enough, 1245. And also, for today's standards, as far as I'm concerned, let me take this uh, cuckoo clock weight off here for now. Like I've said before, I do believe, let me pull this down. I put a ring on here, so when, once this is wound up all the way, it doesn't go until it drops and hits the floor. Now, possibly in the older days, you need, needed to let that thing go off forever because usually you were out working around your homestead, I guess we'll say, close to the house. And that way you would hopefully hear this thing when it starts really going off. So here I haven't actually ran this to figure out a weight on it. It's a wood frame clock, so I don't want to get too carried away. I do have these weights here. They feel like about a two or three pound weight. Not sure if I'd want to use them. And I was testing it with a cuckoo clock weight that says 420. And the heavier weight you put on for the bell the more irritating it's going to be, I will admit. Comes to a pendulum. I was just using this here pendulum. This here goes to a battery powered clock. It seemed to work, but like I say, I haven't tested it to see how well the time works with the weight or the pendulum. You could get those pendulums that, that have the smaller, uh, Breasts, I do believe it is, that are adjustable. And it already has its wire going up. And start testing that so you can get your length and also to make sure that the weight that you put on the clock will run the clock with the pendulum you stick on there. But it is a unique clock. I wanted to get this dial on here. Just to kind of give you a better idea of what this clock does. Like I say, it's a alarm clock, not necessarily to cook with, but to possibly get up in the morning. Uh, you could have put a cake in the oven. You only want to bake an hour. You have to spin this here hand around until, like here, it's a quarter, quarter, quarter to one o'clock one and you just bring this thing around for however long that cake's going to be in the oven and it will go off now if you don't want to set the alarm again if you're back in the old days you won't wind the side that the alarm goes on you just let the clock run and only r wind up the time side so this was a unique experience for me I've always wanted a wood framed clock I will admit this is all rust and whatnot which some people thrive on that maybe I went ahead and painted mine black normally you have what they call a shield on the front of your clock I don't know about this one but I'd still say it probably has some kind of a shield fancy or whatever because it looking at the hands it was a bigger and nicer clock at the time but i'm not going to leave this on here i'm going to probably get a piece of board seal it and then maybe try my hand at painting someday to give it a, something fancy like i say i got this dial uh online i happened to see it so i printed it and it happened to be big enough for these hands 
so I'm happy about that but like I say this is just a temporary thing so I do hope you learned something from this video or, or if anything just kind of a cool clock that normally you don't get a chance to work on or see what the clocks all about such as the wood plates in there and which they do I'm sure have brass bushings on the inside of those plates it wouldn't be just straight wood and Maybe someday I'll get one that has the wood gears also. Anyway, until next time, I appreciate that you guys stopped by. Don't forget to comment. Give me a thumbs up if you don't mind. And until next time, God bless. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe because it's free.